Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 1 over x, and we're going to be solving for x values. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the second one. All right, second method. So for my second method, I'm going to do the following. First of all, I have x to the power x equals 1 over x. I'm going to cross multiply. So this gives us x to the power x times x equals 1. Now x is the same thing as x to the power 1. So from here, if you add the exponents, you get x to the power x plus 1 equals 1. I know this is fairly simple, but I think if you're kind of new to exponential equations, this will be very helpful. Now, we do have a situation where we have a to the power b equals 1. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at different uh, possibilities. So if a to the power b is equal to 1, one of the three has to happen. a is not equal to 0, but b is equal to 0, in which case we have a non-zero number raised to the power 0, which is always 1. Or we have a equals 1. In this case, if the base is 1, the exponent doesn't matter, so we just need b to be a real number. And then, for the third case, we can have a equals negative 1 and b equals even. So those are the three cases that we need to check. Let's go ahead and check each one. First case, x to the power x plus 1 equals 1 implies x does not equal 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. This gives us x equals negative 1. We're going to go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll check each solution, okay? The second scenario is x equals 1, because that's the base, remember that, right? And in this case, we don't really care about x plus 1, but we just want it to be a real number, and it is going to be a real number, so don't, don't just worry about it. So x equals 1 is going to be the other solution. Okay, what about the third scenario? A can be negative 1, the base. By the way, I could use B for base, but doesn't matter. So x could be negative 1, and x plus 1 has to be even. Okay, they're still too close, so I'm going to have to fix that. Okay, so when x is negative 1, x plus 1 becomes 0, so 0 is an even number. In case you didn't know, some people don't believe that. When we say 0 is even, really? Are you serious? Yeah, it is. it's even, and it's, you know, um, it's just even. Anyways, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought. So x equals negative 1 is the other possibility. But we already talked about it. We got x equals negative 1. So there are two solutions. Make sense? We have two solutions, and those solutions are negative 1 and positive 1. Now, we got to go ahead and check these, but it, it is going to work because we... We went by the cases, and those cases always work. Okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. And then after looking at the first method, we are going to... I'm going to show you a graph. Uh, because the graph of uh, this function is kind of interesting. Especially the graph of x to the power x is fairly interesting. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first method. So for our first method, we're going to do the following. Let me rewrite the original problem. We have x to the power x equals 1 over x. Now, for the first method, remember, we did cross multiplication, and then we went by those three cases. This is going to be a different method. Okay. We're going to ln both sides. Now, it makes sense because when you have, especially when you have a variable in the exponent, you should ln both sides, almost uh, all the time. So if you ln x to the x and ln 1 over x, you get the following. So x is, x is an exponent, so we can go ahead and move it. That's the purpose. x ln x, which is a little easier than x to the x. And ln 1 over x can be written as ln x to the power negative 1. But negative 1 is also a power that can be moved as well. And if you move that to the front, then you get negative 1 times ln x or negative ln x. Now, when you look at a problem like this, I could write this problem like that. x ln x equals 
negative 1 times ln x. Does that mean x equals negative 1? No. Well, yes and no, because negative 1 is not in the domain, but to uh, take care of this issue, we have to use absolute value. So if you do use absolute value, then you, you're not going to have a problem with negatives because negative 1 is in the domain. Anyways, so we're going to do it differently, so we don't care about this now. We have now the following equation. x ln x equals negative ln x. I'm going to go ahead and add ln x to both sides. That's going to give me x ln x plus ln x equals 0. So now we have an equation that is equal to 0, which is pretty good, because almost all the time you want your stuff to equal 0. It's easier to solve somehow. And to make matters better, not worse, we have a common factor. So we can take out an ln x here and then write this as ln x times x plus 1 equals 0. And this is nice. Why? Because you have two factors and each of them can be 0. So let's go ahead and check each case. If ln x is equal to 0, this implies x equals 1. And the second one, x plus 1 equals 0, implies x equals negative 1. Obviously, negative 1 does not work with ln, but if you use absolute value, again, you're going to eliminate that problem. I didn't use it here because um, we're solving the original problem and, you know, but it's better to use absolute value. Anyways, so 1 and negative 1 are solutions, but why don't we just, for fun, take a look at, um, make sure that those actually work. Okay, easy to check. So if x is 1, 1 to the power 1 equals 1 over 1. Check. Great. And if x is negative 1, negative 1 to the power negative 1, which means the reciprocal of negative 1, which is 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1, is equal to 1 over negative 1. We already talked about it. Talked about it, And that also checks. Therefore, both solutions are good and valid. All right? So we only got two solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And we'll talk about the graph a little bit. And we're just going to wrap everything up. Okay? All right. So here's the graph of y equals x to the power x along with y equals 1 over x. As you know, or you should know, y equals 1 over x is a hyperbola. So it has two branches. But nobody cares about the other branch. The poor branch stays under the x-axis. So the y values and x values are both negative. I mean, they should be because their product is positive 1, right? So we don't care because uh, when x is negative, when you have something like x to the x and x is negative, this is very problematic. It's not well defined. Because when you have negative 1 to the power 1 half, suppose you have something like this, or uh, negative 1 to the power, uh, I shouldn't say negative 1 to the power 1 half. That doesn't work because it's x is x. Anyways, so what if something like negative 1 half to the power uh, negative 1 half, right? That's very problematic because you're talking about the square root of a negative number, which is not well defined in the real world. That's why we're going to avoid negatives. But when you graph this in Desmos, you're going to notice that there are some dots in the negative area. Anyways, so you can see here is that the only intersection point we see is in the positive region because for negatives, this is not well defined, but we well, very well know that x equals negative 1 is a valid solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, watch the shorts, and bye-bye.